What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be covering some of the components that uh, I do believe are essential that should be replaced or upgraded uh, during an M8 big wall build or even something as simple as a stage 2 kit. So we'll run through each of the components, uh, talk a little bit about them, what they do, what the uh, replacement upgrade is and uh, yeah, what you should be doing to make sure that you are increasing the longevity of your M8 motorcycle. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so before we delve too far into this, guys, I just want to give a little bit of background on me. Uh, I started working on Harley Davidsons back in 2007. Uh, it is now 2023, so I, I have got some experience working on the machines. Since the introduction of the Milwaukee 8 engine, I have been mucking around with them. So my primary role here at Darling Downs Harley is building engines, putting in cam kits, dyno tuning, and just making these things go as fast as we can. So I like to think that I've got a little bit more experience mucking around with these things than your friend in the comment section. So I'm happy to go through and discuss all of these components and what I believe should be upgraded, guys. So uh, we're gonna be starting right here with the oil pump. Now, Harley Davidson, this is not the latest pump, this is, this is one of the earlier ones. Harley Davidson have since updated this and they're now running an eight lobe G rotor on the scavenge side of the pump. Now, there are a few other minor changes throughout as well. A seal went on the back here during the revision process and a few other things. However, that should be replaced. If you have a 2017 up until 2020, uh, some of the 2020s would be fine, but um, yeah, 2017, it should be replaced and on up until 2020, late 19 in that area. So uh, the easiest way to do guys, if, if you're getting a cam kit done, the engine builder or the technician should be able to, you know, they should be pulling the pump out to inspect it anyway. And if it's not the uh, eight lobe G rotor, it should be. So that is number one. Now, okay, moving on. The compensator ramp. Now this guy will break and ruin your day. It'll ruin your weekend. It'll ruin your life if this thing breaks because uh, there is zero drive from the crankshaft to the uh, clutch and obviously to the transmission. So if this breaks, you are in a world of hurt, folks. This guy has had a bad rap since day one. So I don't know if there were some issues with the casting process early on or what, but uh, this guy has been, I've seen it break on f just stock 114 engines and uh, I've seen it explode on 131 cubic inch bikes. Now, there are options out there, guys. This guy, we, uh, this guy is available through Alpha Performance Engine here in Australia uh, or Cycle Rama in the States. And I will not put a big bore bike together without one of these. Now it is costly at around 700 Australian dollars. However, um, a broken down Harley that you cannot ride on the side of the road on the weekend is uh, a, that's a bad day. So uh, 700 bucks is quite cheap insurance when uh, you think of it that way. So yeah, guys, as I said, it should be replaced on every big wall bill. I won't put a big wall bike together without one. Some stage two bikes, if I start talking to the customer and I find out a little bit about them, that's what I do here. I talk to you guys, I find out how you ride, what you like to do. If you're into doing wheelies and you're into doing skids, that's great, I am too. So you're gonna get one of these because I do not wanna send you guys out here on a bike that I've built and you go and break this. So you're gonna get one of these if you're into skids, wheelies, or you're getting a big wall bill. All right, moving on, the lifter cuffs. Now these things too also have a bad rap because they are plastic. Now, again guys, I've been working on these bikes, putting camshafts in them, doing big wall builds since the introduction of them back in 2017. And I have not seen one fail. They are fine, they serve their purpose. They are, they are literally, what, what they're designed to do is stop the rotation of the lifter. So, you can see there's flats machined on each side of the lifter and same into the lifter cuff here. So when the lifter sits in there, as it comes up, as the valve lifts it up and down, it is literally stopping the rotation of the lifter. Now, these are roller lifters. So they have a roller on, this lifter is actually far, this is a destroyed one. This is another reason why these should be replaced. Uh, however, these are basically just keeping these things in place and stopping them from twisting. Because if they twist, obviously they're gonna end up on the cam load sideways and it's a bad day. Now, 
on high lift cams, so when we're talking over 500 thou, I do recommend going to a billet option. Now these guys from Cyclerama are outstanding. The uh, billet aluminium machine product, absolutely outstanding. So that will replace the plastic unit, obviously. They do come with a, uh, an upgraded high tensile bolt as well. So on anything lower guys than, you know, probably 500 thou lift, I, I don't know, you know I've, I've never seen these fail, ever. And I've seen some bad things happen in cam chests. I've seen lifters explode and all sorts of things. And these guys have not broken. So um, look, that's up to you guys. Th th these are pretty cheap. In Australia, these are about 120 Australian dollars. So they're very cheap to do. Uh, they do add that security and longevity. But as I said, anything over about 500 thou lift, I do highly recommend these just because you're lifting the valve, um, you know, you're lifting the tap it up pretty high and you do want to make sure it's hanging on. And for 120 bucks, it is very cheap insurance. The OEM lifters. Now this guy has had a bad day on here. Hopefully you can see uh, that basically it's, it's had a bad day. This thing has locked up and luckily, luckily this thing was caught in time. It was making a, a, a hell of a noise the uh, owner shut it down immediately and brought it in. Thank God, because uh, yeah, that could have been a very, very, very bad day. However, they are meant to be flat and, and symmetrical and around. It's a roller lifter, right? So that's what they should be doing. These guys should be replaced. Again, guys, there are options through Alpha Performance Engines here in Australia. Uh, there are plenty of other manufacturers out there doing them. Uh, I believe they're 843,000 is the OD on these guys uh, as a, as a um, standard. So, uh, yeah, there are plenty of options out there, but the, but the factory lifters should be replaced. If you're doing a cam job, guys, throw a set of upgraded aftermarket lifters in there. All right, guys, the factory inner cam bearing. Now, I hope you guys can see, but this is what they call a caged needle roller. So the needle rollers here are put into a cage that holds them in place. And basically, that is the, the simplicity of that. Now there is an aftermarket, well, there is an option through Harley and aftermarket that what they, it is what they call a full complement bearing. So all the needle rollers, again, I hope you can see, all the needle rollers are butted up against one another. And that adds a lot of strength to the bearing and ensures that the uh, camshaft is supported uh, as, as best it can be. Now I will not put a stage two bike together without one of these. They're under $50 here Australian. And uh, as I said, if your bike's getting an aftermarket camshaft, it's getting one of these bearings because if that guy fails, uh, that's in the cam chest that could go drop. If this fails, obviously your cam chest is going to come down and rattle around inside your, your, yeah, your cam chest. Uh, this is going to fall apart. The oil pump could pick it up. It's going to just lunch everything. It's a bad day. So yeah, for under 50 bucks uh, Australian, uh, thereabouts, this guy is going in your bike if it's a stage two and up. All right, clutch springs, guys. So. The uh, factory clutch in the M8 engine um, is, is honestly, it's pretty good. Now again, guys, I've been mucking around with these things since their introduction back in 2017, and I haven't had a clutch issue yet. Sure, you will burn a clutch out if you abuse it. Like if you give me the best race clutch out there, I, like I will wreck it if you want. Like it's, it's operator abuse, right? Like you wreck anything that you want if you're being an idiot. Now, the factory clutch on the M8 is pretty good. It will handle, you know, we run 150 foot pounds through these things all the time and we have no issues. The only thing that we do do is upgrade the springs. Now, these springs are a Harley David, they're a genuine Harley Davidson product. The part number's there, I'll put it on the screen, but it's 37000286. Now, they are the 1275 Newton springs, Newton meter springs and uh, they hold the clutch together absolutely fine. We race these things on, on them, and as I said, guys, we run at over 150 foot-pounds through these clutches with these springs in there, and we don't have a problem. Okay, lastly, guys, the cam support plate. This is the OEM cast aluminium unit from Harley-Davidson. Now, this guy's got a bit of a bad rap, but again, let me tell you guys, I've never, ever, ever seen one of these fail. Now, 
I'm sure that there's a few guys out there that are going to hit the comment section hard and say, well, yep, me buddy this, me buddy that, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I don't care. I've never seen one fail. If, if there has been a problem somewhere, it could have been a manufacturing defect. There could have been a, something blocked in there from fact. Who knows? Like, I don't care, but I've never seen one fail. I will recommend an upgrade if you want to put a very stupid high lift camshaft in there that's over 500 thousandths you know, way, way up the 550s, 560s, like whatever you do, there's big camshafts where you've got a machine out the bottom of the, the SE cam plate. I mean, you, 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 I don't want to get into this stupid high lift cam stuff. You don't really need to lift the cam that high in the M8 engine, right? But this guy is a great unit. It does work. As I said, it, it, it's outstanding. It doesn't have any issues whatsoever, guys. I will re recommend going to the Screaming Eagle high volume oil pump and cam plate kit if you want to upgrade to something. Okay, I'm not going to stop you. If you want to spend the money on, you want to upgrade your oil pump and uh, your cam plate to an option, go for it. I highly suggest the Screaming Eagle one. The reason I suggest the Screaming Eagle option over the Fueling Race, the Pro Race Series or whatever it is, and the SNS one is because the Screaming Eagle one is the only one that I have seen that has not failed. I've seen the SNS ones fail, the brass bushing in there is mucked up, and the fueling one, I've seen issues there too. Some guys have had them sumping and all sorts of things. Now, I'm not saying that that's an issue with the product, that could have been an issue with the technician that put it together, like I don't know, but all I know is that the SNS one and the fueling one, I've seen them fail. Fueling do have an option that is just a cam plate, it's called the OE Plus. Now, it will work with the factory oil pump. That is a very cheap, option and I do recommend it for guys who just want to put one in there for security reasons and they if you just don't like this that's fine there is an option from fueling it's called the OE plus and uh, I fitted them before you've seen a lot of my other videos I fitted them in those and uh, they do work just fine they're a little bit stronger and uh, you can there's bungs in them you can pull them out flush them out and clean them so they are great so yeah that's pretty much it guys uh, that runs through all of the components that I believe should be upgraded no matter what uh, or I do have an option for you to upgrade them too. But uh, paramount, guys, is obviously the oil pump. If you're running a bike that's earlier than 2020, you should be getting that oil pump looked at and replaced to the eight-lobe factory uh, pump from Harley-Davidson or the Screaming Eagle option. I do not recommend the s and uh, or the fueling pump and plate combo. The only pump-plate combo I do recommend is the Screaming Eagle one. So, guys, I hope that... Uh, Dispels a few myths. Again, I've been mucking around with these things since day one. Since they, since the first M8 came into this workshop, I put it straight up on my bench here, pulled it apart, got into it, put a cam in it, because that was all that was available at the time. Uh, and then as soon as there was big bull kits, I was putting those in, doing the 117s. We did a 120 back then that was big for those. I mean, now we bought 128s onto these things, 131s. We do 143s with them now. Like, the sky's just, the ceiling's just getting high with these things. So. Uh, look, I like to think I've got a little bit of experience when it comes to the components that fail and that the components that do need to be replaced, guys. So uh, if you want to take anything away from this, uh, I, hope you, I hope you do take something away from this, sorry, and uh, really take it on board and, and just don't get too caught up in the hype that's out there on Instagram and the internet when, you know, that this should be replaced, that should be done and, and all that sort of stuff. Because all it does is just put doubt in your minds, it puts doubt in the other customers minds and puts doubt in other technicians who are not quite competent yet who are still finding their way in the performance game so yeah those are the few options that i recommend to do guys i hope you found this interesting and i'll see you again in another build video real soon